Hey guys, and welcome back to our show. So we got a really great lineup today with some exciting content. And so before we get going, I wanna go ahead and invite you to hit that subscribe button so you can get all the latest content and updates from Power Mechanical. So today we're talking about fire tube boilers and a couple of configurations that they come in. And so uh, if you want more information on uh, these, these kind of topics, I wanna to invite you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And that way you can stay up to date when uh, we're gonna be having steam school coming up. So uh, let's just get right to it. So guys, I'm a firm believer that when you understand the construction of something, then it greatly impacts your understanding for its operation. And like many kids growing up, I always enjoyed taking things apart. And sometimes I'd lose interest in these things before putting them back together. But regardless, the outcome was an understanding of how something was made and how it worked, as well as a closet slammed full of random miscellaneous parts. So in understanding a boiler's operation and maintenance, it's important to understand the boiler's design features. A common term with regards to fire tube boilers that you'll often hear is dry back and wet back. These two terms are fairly self-explanatory in that the back refers to the first turn of the combustion chamber. If you consider the front of a fire tube boiler, the end with the burner affixed to it, then the opposite door or side would be the back. In a dry back boiler, the Morrison or furnace tube extends the length of the boiler where the furnace gases will then meet the target wall that is the refractory field and make a turn and begin the second pass. As we've discussed in a previous video with regards to refractory, the rear door refractory of these dry back boilers is of utmost importance and has a direct correlation with the boiler's efficiency. So the initial pass with the furnace tube is where the majority of the heat transfer is taking place in any fire tube boiler. In these dry back boilers, the furnace gases are essentially reflected off of this refractory and then it makes this turn for the second pass. The dry back boilers are easier to inspect and clean because of this design yet the refractory repair and replacement can carry some hefty cost. Generally, a dry back boiler will carry a lower upfront cost as compared to the water back design. Now in the water back or wet back design, this first pass is then jacketed with the boiler water. So this is going to create an even more effective heat transfer area for the first pass. It's important to remember that most of the heat is going to be put to work in the initial pass of any fire tube boiler and hence having more surface area of this first pass surrounded by water is basically getting the most out of the heat versus it just being lost from radiant heat on the rear target wall. As I often say, heat transfer is the name of the game and the better and more efficient we can do that, the better the entire plant is. And a wet back design boiler can increase the heat transfer efficiency as much as 3%. So typically the wet back design will carry much lower maintenance concerns over the life as compared to the dry back design. With this design, certain repairs or procedures like retubing for the water back can be quite complex. So the biggest distinguishing characteristic of the water back is this separate rear tube sheet for the first pass. This interior and very much confined tube sheet makes the water back much more of a challenge for repairs and certain inspection procedures. However, with this reversal chamber being surrounded by water, it greatly increases the ratio of input to output while at the same time, we'll be making the tube ends and sheets less prone to shock. So conversely, in a dry back design, the boiler has a shared tube sheet at each end for each pass, and this can increase the shocking or stress on the tube sheet in response to the differentials in temperature from each pass, especially under certain operating conditions. Another feature of the water back boiler's design is that the refractory is minimized. Most of the time, the doors are lightweight and can be removed much easier as compared to the dry back design. In many cases, a single person can open the boiler door and remove for repairs or inspections. So this refractory is certainly something worth consideration as the cost of a rear door replacement on a dry back boiler could be anywhere from six to $10,000 or even more tentative to the boiler size for replacement. The weight of these rear doors as well as the span and swing needed for opening and closing the boiler are also worth noting. Both the dry back and the wet back have their places globally in industries, and one is not per se superior to the other, just that certain considerations are important factors for facilities when choosing a boiler based on what fits their needs best. Our rental fleet has numerous fire tube boilers in both design configurations to fit near any application. And as I always like to mention, we are confident you will not find a better value for your next rental project. Call right now and find out for yourself while when it comes to boiler rentals, nobody beats Power Mechanical, and I mean nobody. nobody.
All right, guys, there you have it. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, be sure and hit that thumbs up button down there. And also make sure and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Other than that, we'll see you next week for another Steamworks.